Hi everyone, so today I'm going to continue my Explained Correctly series and I'm going to begin talking about the types themselves, the types explained correctly. And today I'm going to be talking about the ENTP to start this off. So the ENTP, um, known as the inventor, um, yes, this is my type. It's a type I'm very fond of, of course. Um, and as you'll see with all the different types, they are divided up into four main parts, you could say. And I'll be covering each part. This part is called a block. So I'll be covering each block, making up each of the 16 types. And starting today, of course, with the ENTP. So what's the first block? The first block is the ego block. And for the ENTP, the ego block is made up of any, so extroverted intuition, and TI, introverted thinking. And when this is together, you may have seen this in my video about any and TI together, um, what this suggests is a type that what they bring to the world, what they are most likely to um, focus on as an area of strength and an area of value, so this is sort of their, their calling card, you could say, is exploration of theory. This is a type which is very interested in looking at all different sorts of ways of making sense of the world around them. So they are theory builders. They are system uh, explorers. They want to find the perfect theory to explain how everything fits together. That's the main point for when you have any and TI together. Um, and the idea is that they want to sort of build an understanding of the world where everything sort of fits together and makes sense and covers all different aspects and all different possibilities. So it's, it's a very theoretical space. Now, out of this, you have the first function, which is the dominant function. This is in the ego block. And that for an ENTP is extroverted intuition. So the ENTP, their, their main lens, their main way of looking at the world is through this extroverted intuition, through expanding the range of possibility around them. ENTPs, by their nature, are very curious, very open-minded individuals. They are types which are interested in all the different possibilities around them, and they're drawn to understand what these different possibilities are. They want to make sense of them. They want to allow new potential things to happen. So what they're inclined to do is they're quite a permissive type. They're a type which tends to be very open-ended, likes to explore things, doesn't like to limit possibilities. Um, this is a type which may try things which other people may not find always entirely appropriate to try. But they want to see it. They want to see what could possibly happen. And that's the key thing. That's what's motivating them throughout. So expanding their range of possibilities is very, very much a focus. Um, now, what is supporting them with extroverted intuition, supporting this general curiosity and open-mindedness is introverted thinking. So it's their, their, it's their auxiliary function. So why is the auxiliary function? The idea is that introverted thinking, which is that focus on structure, making sense of things, how things all fit, fit together, um, that is supporting extroverted intuition. So in their explorations, for them to best realize and explore these possibilities, they have to make sense of it. They have to fit it together and see how it all aligns. This is why they are theoretical types. It's not about a personal subjective or arbitrary reasons for exploring possibilities. They want to have something which is more objective, more impartial. They want things to fit together and cohere. And so this is a type which is very fluid in their use of introverted thinking to support the extrovert intuition. The extrovert intuition is very much, I want to explore this. I won't be deterred from exploring whatever is possible and keeping things open and getting distracted by all sorts of the, the interesting alternative stuff and trying to do something which other people haven't done before, something which hasn't been looked at in the same way before. That sort of desire for originality and alternativeness as an ENTP. And then introverted thinking is there ready to help them to explain how it all fits together, how it all makes sense for them, to really align that in a way that's coherent. And they can very rapidly explain and re-explain and explain again as they as they may shift in their perspectives and ways of thinking. ENTP is a type which once they're in, they've encountered the right reasons and structures, they can actually change their mind. They can change their mind almost quickly, like suddenly they change their mind and suddenly 
the intro of the thinking has to realign rapidly to make sense of a new thing, which makes them very good at explaining things on the spot and very good at then reformulating their explanations as things change. So that's what I say about that introverted thinking. It's not pushed onto people in a rigid way. It's very flexible. It's the extrovert intuition, which is actually quite pushed in terms of that a focus on many different possibilities and opening things up. So that's the ego block. Now let's look at the super ego block for the ENTP. Now, what is a super ego block? This is rather than being strong and valued, it is what is weak and unvalued, neglected, you could say. This is very much rather like the ego block. It's also in that public sphere, you could say. It's how we are coming across to others. But here, it is about our failures in public rather than our calling card. This is what people are expecting of us, and we feel forced to have to do it, essentially. So there are two parts of this, SE and FI, extroverted sensing and introverted feeling. So when these are together, this idea of things being quite harsh and personal, that's what the ENTP doesn't like. They don't like um, per very sort of personalized, very serious confrontations of individuals over their character. They don't like that. that, that um, ENTPs are explorers. They are inventors. They're not they don't like to have uh, conflict and make things personal against others. That's not their style. So first of all, we have the role function. And the role function is more flexible. It's more able to adapt to the expectations. ETPs are often quite, quite aware they need to be tougher. They need to be stronger in a world which demands willpower and uh, persistence in achieving uh, more materialistic goals. ENTPs know they have to go out and do that. They have to actually be tough to some degree. It is a drain on an ENTP to have to do that. These are not types which like to sustain their willpower because as soon as they get interested in something else, their natural response is to pursue the new possibility. They have that magpie personality. So this idea that you have to actually take things head on rather than be indirect and seek all the other alternative ways you can think about a situation. That's not very natural. So ENTPs feel almost dirty utilizing extroverted sensing and being tough and being pushy and, and confronting people directly. But they can do it. When they do it, they're better at using it with introverted thinking to help so they can enforce rules. They need an objective reason for why they should be doing this and asserting themselves in this way. And it, yeah, but doing too much can tire them out. Um, what they can't do very well, though, is introverted feeling, which is the vulnerable function. So this is meant to support extroverted sensing. It's meant to allow the ENTP to use harsh judgment of individuals. But because it's in the vulnerable function, it can't do that. It's a complete blind spot. It refuses to budge. And what that means is that ENTPs almost cannot bring themselves to acknowledge these negative personal attitudes towards people. They can recognize moods and emotions, but not say, I despise that individual and that person's character. If you ask them who they like, who they dislike in a very personal way, they'll lean towards finding something more objective to say, like some sort of structure or checklist, or, or simply look at what other people are feeling and saying. Because it's not, it's very hard for them to come up with very personal reasons to say no to things. That saying, oh, I don't like this. I don't feel comfortable about this. It's not something they need to be often can actually say, even though they might actually feel uncomfortable about something. They find it hard to almost admit it and talk about it. And it's very often you find that ENTP is often quite hard to offend for a similar sort of reason. They don't like to admit they might be offended and that there's a personal subjective arbitrary reason for not to do something. So introverted feeling is quite hard in ENTP. They often struggle to maintain close bonds and relationships with other people. Whereas they can be, you know, assertive sometimes. They're not very assertive. Depends on what pressure they're under. They can adapt to the demands of them to some degree. Um, introverted feeling is not adaptive. So they you may find they may be overly familiar with strangers or overly distant from their best friends. They may struggle to maintain friendships over a long period of time. Some ENTPs, if they're not aware of these difficulties, could also be have, have a string of failed marriages even has been seen in a few famous examples. So yes, intro to feeling is very, very difficult for an ENTP to engage with, and they don't value it really at all. They don't really recognize it as being important. Some ENTPs go so far as to think that personal character is a myth. 
They may think that people are simply causally determined in all that they do or come up with some other theory to explain people, which doesn't depend on any kind of personal assessment. So that is the super ego block. So let's turn to the super id block. And the super id block, this is still weak, but it is now valued. And it's more private now. So this is the area which is about personal growth and personal aspirations. So in this, you've got SI and FE, introverted sensing and extroverted feeling. So this is that nice, cuddly um, collection. It's a, a positive emotionality, people feeling safe and included and accepted. So an ENTP needs this. They want this. They don't know how to create and sustain this themselves. It's not forced on them like the superego block. This is what they really want and desire. But they need a bit of help here and, and different kinds of help in different kinds of areas. And we can split this up into the, the suggestive function, which is, again, just as weak as, as the vulnerable function for the ENTP. And that's introverted sensing, introverted sensation. So ENTPs, because they're so caught up in different ideas and possibilities and how things uh, might be, they aren't very good at being grounded in the day-to-day. -day. They are often out of touch with the needs of their bodies. They often don't look after themselves very well. They may stay up too late. They may um, go out without a coat. They may not eat for a long time, especially if they're interested in, in something, or they just str very much struggle to realize when their body needs them to actually do something to sustain that homeostasis. They often sit in uncomfortable positions. They do uncomfortable things. They don't often realize. And once they're reminded, then suddenly they'll respond to that and try to do something about it. And often in the pursuit of a sort of blissful um, existence in that present moment, they want to find that. They want to find that blissful relaxation. And they struggle to find it and sustain it. Yeah, they don't have a great awareness of detail. They are much more about big picture uh, multiple possibility thinkers. So they need someone who can maintain and sustain around them. And they like that sort of comforting, um, pleasant environment. Because by having that environment, by having a chilled, relaxed, nice, pleasant, tranquil, harmonious experience, which is what they sort of kind of need, that breaks them out of the need to be pushing, to be confronting, to be striving for all these sorts of physical, materialistic um, goals for them it's it, this takes the pressure off and they actually like an environment where the pressure is sort of released they'll respond to pressure they'll take on high pressure if they need to but they like an environment where that's sort of taken care of and it's made softer and more harmonious again and they're not very good at doing this themselves they may unintentionally make people uncomfortable maybe on to be a bit too over the top in things they don't easily balance they often verge towards extremes in things so they're kind of someone else wants to tell them that's that's going to disrupt things. That's going to send things off course. And of course, in terms of a day to day pleasantness sort of way, the ENTP needs someone who can also poke that out, point that out to them so they can keep things more appropriate to the present circumstances and more, more easily embrace that golden mean in life. Um, now, the other thing is extroverted feeling as their mobilizing function. So this is a bit different. So ENTPs need to basically outsource introverted sensation to someone else, ideally the nurturer, the ISFP. But an ENTP doesn't need to outsource extroverted feeling. They kind of want to be able to do this themselves. So ENTPs, at least when they start off, they can become quite insufferable with their extroverted feeling because they want to try to provoke all sorts of emotional reactions in other people. They are, an ENTP rarely does something privately. They're often thinking, how can I show this to others? How can I do something that will create reactions in other people? And so this idea of chasing these sort of positive moods from others is something which an ENTP can get very caught up in doing, often quite inappropriately, often in a way which um, doesn't necessarily lead to, reaction, to the reaction they want. Now, over time, an ENTP can get better at this. They can become better able to pitch themselves in a way that is socially acceptable. And they can become quite charismatic and charming figures because the idea is that they want, don't want to just blend in. They want to stand out in a way which is interesting and in a way which 
comes across well to others and gains admiration from others. So interviews are very public facing people. Now that carries certain downsides. By pursuing the public facing side, they can forget about their personal private lives, which links together with that introverted feeling as being their vulnerable function. So yeah, that's why I say about the extroverted feeling. A lot of it, you can say that ENTPs push both extrovert intuition and extroverted feeling. So pushing that enthusiasm and excitement about new ideas to explore, that's what an ENTP wants to do. And you often find them in public spaces, maybe perhaps being educators, perhaps becoming um, comedians, entertainers. ENTPs often like that with a sort of more nerdy intellectual edge because they are NT types at the end of the day. Okay, so finally, I turn to the id block. Now the id block, this is strong now. So it's an area of capability. They can You can adapt to this if you're an ENTP in unfamiliar situations, so it's strong. But it's not valued. You take this area for granted if you're an ENTP. So that means this can be an area which you fall back on when you're you know, in less of a safe environment. It can be what you just do for yourself. It's private. You do it for yourself, essentially. It's not something you tend to wave as being, this is my calling card. This is not really exciting enough to you to do it that way. So there are two parts of the id block. First of all, you have the ignoring function, and that is introverted intuition for an ENTP. So ENTPs, because they're so much about expanding the breadth of possibilities, they're quite stubborn in doing that. It's very hard to discourage an ENTP from not opening things up and allowing more potential things to happen. So they don't like the idea of narrowing down possibilities and saying no to possibilities for the sake of it. So an ENTP has to really think there's no possibility of this working for them to actually say, right, I'm not even going to bother in this. This is not going to lead anywhere. This is not going anywhere. That's not to say an ENTP is weak in introvert intuition. They do know which possibilities have weight, which ones are going to go somewhere, which ones are not. They just are averse to using this unless it is in line with their extrovert intuition. So to help them to explore um, those possibilities with the greatest potential, they will draw from some introverted intuition to see which ones have that long term potential, which ones don't. But these are not types who are going to cancel out all distractions to focus on the one goal, the one thing of meaning. They might have to force themselves to do that if one possibility is worthwhile enough. But they don't lean towards that. They learn lean towards breadth, not towards the depth of where things are meant to be going. So, yeah, that's what I say about the introvert intuition. ENTPs, if they see the red button, they'll push it. Even if they think it might not work very well, it might lead to a problem. They want to see just in case I want to try it out. That's the ENTP mindset. Now, the other thing they use... Um, and use this a lot more because introvert intuition is used minimalistically, as I said. What they use a lot more is their demonstrative function. And that is the function which is sort of continuously going in the background. It's every bit as strong and obvious as their leading or dominant function, but it is not valued for its own sake. And for an ENTP, that's extroverted thinking. ENTPs are very able to be very pragmatic problem solvers. They are types which are often can quickly come up with not only an explanation of how things fit together and make sense, but also how it works and how it might be improved. ENTPs often kick back and can relax by absorbing large amounts of factual information, spending time on Wikipedia just looking stuff up is often what the ENTP might be doing, because for them, absorbing of facts is second nature to them. What they don't do is push this as a thing of importance. They don't think you have to be efficient. You have to work as um, effectively as possible. You have to be taking on factual information and improving all the time. ETPs don't place that kind of expectation on others. It's, it's, this is not a valued thing. It's, it's, it's simply it's neglected, but it's very strong and ever-present. So instead, ETPs are going to be more playing around with this, learning a lot, and then directing this towards their introverted thinking. When ENTPs are trying their extroverted feeling and that blows up in their face, let's say they say something's inappropriate, some people are always hating, or suddenly start reacting very negatively to them, they may fall back on their extroverted thinking, which is low stakes, low reward, rather than the high stakes, high reward extroverted feeling. And they'll start becoming more factual, more informative, less likely to tell edgy jokes, which could cause a negative reaction. 
Um, but also the extroverted thinking is working very much with the introverted thinking, which is why an, e an ENTP is able to quickly learn new facts and update their models of understanding and change their mind and make sense of things in this new way and suddenly apply new solutions from that new model of framework. OK, so that is the all eight functions of Model A for the ENTP. That is ENTP explained correctly. If you'd like to learn more, this is all derived from socionics as opposed to that regular Myers-Briggs type decade. This is the correct way of looking at it. This is the more advanced a way of greater explanatory power, greater complexity for understanding the types. So if you'd like to learn more, please email worldsocionics at hotmail.com. I have a course you can take to learn more all about this type and all the other types in greater depth, greater detail, as well as all the stuff which makes up this theory of personality type. So thank you for tuning in today, everyone. Wishing you all the best. Take care. Bye-bye.